Hey, this is Kip, and in this video, I'm gonna fly from Forest City, Iowa to Viroqua, Wisconsin. And yes, I did have to practice saying Viroqua. And this route is using VOR navigation only, and I did it using the Cessna 172 Skyhawk Steam Gauge Edition. It's available as part of the Microsoft Flight Simulator Deluxe Edition. So if you want that and four other aircraft that come with a Deluxe Edition, you can find it in the Microsoft Flight Simulator Marketplace. All right, so here we are on skyvector.com. This is where I like to do most of my flight planning, especially in the United States. So using the flight plan window in the top left corner, I put in our departure and arrival airport codes and then click the route drop down to choose the recommended route. So there's only one available, so that's the one I picked. In the top right, I changed from the world VFR map to use the low on-route airways map and this makes it a lot easier to see the airways and the information so we can more easily plan the route here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is kind of take some notes here based on the route and give myself a little instruction sheet to follow so I don't have to always go and reference the charts. So I'm putting in our departure code here, KFXY. This is the Forest City Municipal Airport. And then right next to that, it shows the AWOS frequency already, so I'll note that 123.9 or 25. So we can check the weather when we hop into the plane. Next, let's start going step by step. We can see that we go to the east here and join the Victor 161. So to do that, we need to get onto this radial here off of the Mason City VOR. So let's go ahead and note the VOR information here for Mason City. So the VOR code right there, the identifier, Mike Charlie Whiskey, so MCW, and then the frequency 114.9er. Now, we're going to have to fly on a specific radial away from this VOR to join the Victor 161 airway. So we can find that radial just by looking where the airway connects to the VOR. So right here it says 032. So 032 is the radial. Remember, radials are always coming from the VOR. So in our case, since we're going to be flying away or from the VOR, we will set our course to 032. So here I'll write down course 032. And next, I'm going to type down Victor 161 and 3,000 feet. So Victor 161 is the name of the airway. And then the 3,000 feet here is our MEA, our minimum on-route altitude. And right here in the square, there's a number 52. And that tells us that between these two VORs, it's a total of 52 nautical miles. And then up here, we see that we're going to approach and then we're going to make a turn once we get to the Rochester VOR. So let's write down the Rochester VOR info. That's Romeo Sierra Tango, and then the frequency is 112.0. And now, once we're headed towards the Rochester VOR, we need to know what our inbound radial is. That's shown right there as well. So that radial is 213. Now, that's not a course of 213. Remember, a course of 213 will be going southwest. That's the way the radial goes from the VOR, away from it. So the radial is 213. So if we want to know the course, when we're going inbound, we just need to take the reciprocal of that. So the reciprocal of 213 would be 033. And I do that just by using the minus 2 plus 2 trick. So I subtract 2 from the first number and then add it to the second number. You may also notice that the course is different, 032 and then 033. And that's because each of the VORs has their own magnetic declination. So they may not be perfectly pointed to the exact same magnetic north reference. So they're about one degree difference. This 52 right here in the square, that's telling us it's 52 nautical miles between the Mason City and Rochester VORs. And in this case, what we need to do is switch to use the Rochester VOR when we're inbound and we need to do that switch when we're halfway, so at 26 nautical miles. So half of 52 is 26. So we'll track the Mason City outbound. We'll use that VOR first. Once we get to that halfway point, 26 nautical miles away, we'll switch over to then track inbound to the Rochester VOR. Now, if you see a symbol like this, this is explicitly telling you when to change frequencies. This is called a changeover point. And so if you see this on a segment, it's telling you exactly when to switch over not at the halfway point, but in this case, it would be when you're 44 nautical miles away tracking outbound from the north. So we're flying from north to south like this towards the changeover point, that 44 that points up towards the north, that is how far we'd be from that VOR when we change over to use the one that's to the south. 
And then vice versa. If we were coming in from the south and flying north, then it would be 57 nautical miles away from the south VOR until we switch over to use the one that's to the north. Next up on our route is up here at Rochester VOR. When we get here, we're going to turn to the east. So let's note that. Course 076, that's also the radial 076. We're not doing the reciprocal thing because it's outbound. Whenever we're going outbound from the VOR, the radial is the course we're flying. And then we're joining the Victor 82 slash 170 airway. And then once again, the MEA, minimum on route altitude, 3,000 feet. So, so far, we need to be at or above 3,000 feet to guarantee that we'll have reception of all these VORs we're going to use so far. And then here it shows 50 miles in the box, a little square. That means 50 miles between the two VORs. And we'll use that a minute. Obviously, it will be 25 miles will be the halfway point. All right, next VOR. This is the last one. This one is called the Nodine VOR. So I'll note down the information for this one. The identifier is ODI, so Oscar Delta India, ODI. And then the frequency is 117.9er. And that's going to be the last VOR that we use for this flight plan. Now, if you look down here, our destination airport is down here to the southeast. It's not along a Victor Airway. It doesn't have a fix right on it. It doesn't have any other radials pointing towards it from other VORs to let us know how to get there. So we just need to figure out which radial we should fly away from the Nodine VOR in order to get to the airport we're going to. And the quickest way to do that is just to look at the airport information page. So if I click that link right there and then scroll down, you can see here it says nearby navigation aids. This gives us all the info we need. Find the Nodine VOR right there. That's the one that we're going to be using. We could use the closer one, that lacrosse VOR, but to keep it simple, let's just use the Nodine one because we're going to be already tuned into that one. And it says that it is on a radial of 127. So that means if we fly outbound on a 127 radial, that will reach this airport after we've gone 31.8 nautical miles. So that's what we we'll use our DME for and amongst other things. But in this final leg, when the DME reads 31.8, that is when we'll be at the airport. And then I'll write down some information here. We're looking at the on the page already. So there are runways 11 and 29 er And then up here at the top, I can see the AWOS frequency. So that's for our weather information. That's 118.975. So I'll also note that down. And then at the top here, we can see the elevation of the airport, 1,291 feet. So if we go back here, you can see that right here, 1292. And then under that, like I mentioned, you can see the AWOS 118.9 or 75. All right, so that's all the information I need to get over to this airport. So let's go ahead and go back to the beginning here. And what I'm going to write out is my cruise altitude and figure that out. So remember, along the entire route, the only MEA we saw is 3,000 feet. So we just need to be above 3,000 feet on this route. And that'll give us assurances we'll be able to tune into and receive those VORs. Remember, when you're flying eastbound, you do it at an odd number of thousands of feet. So three, five, seven, and so on. When we fly VFR, we add 500 feet onto that altitude. So for us, we could fly 3,500, 5,500, 7,500, and so on. I like to stay pretty low just because in Microsoft Flight Simulator, I'd love to look at all the scenery. So I'm just going to fly at our minimum altitude here, 3,500 feet. So I'm just going to write 3,500 feet, and that's going to be our cruise altitude for the entire flight. All right, now that we have all that in, we can just hop into the plane and easily just reference our notes instead of referencing the chart every single time. All right, here we are in the Cessna 172, and I'm going to get this started using the assisted checklist, as I do often when I'm feeling lazy. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up, oops, there we go, go into my options here. And if you can do this on Xbox or PC. If you go down to the piloting section, you can turn assisted checklist to on. And then when you open the checklist, so we'll go up to the top toolbar, click the checklist icon, and choose one of these checklists, you'll have this option to auto-complete the page. So your co-pilot will do all the hard work for you. So I'm just going to make my way through these checklists, get it all started up, and then we'll check the weather. All right, so we got the 172 all started up. Let's go ahead and check the weather here at our departure airport. So I took a note, the AWOS 123.925. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and tune that. You could bring up the ATC window to tune that as well, but what I'm gonna do is just do it manually. I'm working my way up to doing VATSIM. So when you do this with VATSIM, generally you're gonna wanna manually input everything. It's not always gonna match in the ATC window in the SIM as to what you're tuning in here on your radio. So good practice to do it manually. And I'm also gonna do this on my COM2 radio. That's a good way to monitor ATIS is to do it on your second COM radio. Now I'll switch over to my notes and note down what it's saying here for the weather. All right, altimeter 29908, and the weather is calm and clear skies, so nothing to worry about there. I'm going to turn off the COM2 monitoring, and then I'll go ahead and update the primary altimeter right here. And then in this plane, I have the CAP autopilot, so what I'm going to do is hit the barrow button, press and hold it to change the unit over to inches of mercury, and then change that barrow reading here to 2998. Now, if you use the shortcut, if you press B on your keyboard, if you're on PC, that's going to automatically set all the altimeters in your aircraft for you. So in this case, it would have set both the autopilot altimeter and the main altimeter. All right, next we have our cruise altitude, 3,500 feet. So because I'm an autopilot, I'm going to change my selected altitude up to 3,500 as a reminder. And that'll be set up for once we take off and enable the autopilot. All right, and then here we have the Mason City VOR. So that's Mike Charlie Whiskey, 114.9, and a course of 032. So I'm going to go to my NAV1 radio. Here in this plane, I have the GNS530 right here at the top. This controls my COM1 and my NAV1 radio. And the bottom one here, the 430, that's COM2 and NAV2 connected to these two CDIs here. So the top CDI is NAV1, and the bottom CDI is NAV2. So for me, I need to change this VLOC or VLOC frequency. That's for VORs and localizers. So it's our radio or navigation radio frequency. So I'm going to push the inner knob here to change it to the bottom section so I can change that frequency. And then I'm just going to change this to 114.9 and swap it. And now I notice that I don't have any reception for that VOR yet. So we're not in range yet. Once we take off, we should get it pretty quickly though. Next, we don't have a GPS flight plan and we're not gonna use GPS. I need to make sure to hit the CDI button to change over from GPS mode to VLOC mode. Otherwise, these CDIs are gonna be coupled to the Garmin's and looking for a GPS flight plan to set their course, but we're not using a GPS flight plan. So what I need to do is change it to VLOC and then I'm gonna manually set our course using the OBS knob. So we set it to 032, that's the first course we're gonna fly outbound, we're going to find the 032 radial of our first VOR. Next, let's take a look at our notes again. Remember, once we intercept the 032 radial for the Mason City VOR, and we're flying on that, we're going to eventually have to switch over to the Rochester VOR. Remember, at 26 nautical miles away from Mason City VOR, we do the switch. That's the halfway point. So the Rochester VOR, so that's Romeo Sierra Tango, 112.0. So let's put that in the standby field right here, 112.0. So it's ready to go, and that's just ready to be swapped over with that V swap button. All right, I also just set the same frequencies in my NAV2 radio just for backup. All right, now let's figure out our fuel. So by default, we're at 50% fuel when we load into the sim. So what I'm gonna do is do a quick fuel plan here using simbrief.com. So if you don't use simbrief, I highly recommend it. It gives you really detailed flight plans. It'll not only generate a route for you, but it'll also do fuel planning, most importantly. So I'm gonna go and edit the existing flight plan I already had. I had the departure and arrival airports already entered. And under aircraft type, you can see I chose the Cessna 172. So now we scroll down a little bit here. I'm just gonna make sure that I have my passengers and weight set up. We have zero passengers, so I'm gonna put that in. And then for freight, that's at zero. And then here we can see the suggested route on Simbrief. And spoiler alert, the flight worked out just fine, but now that after the fact, you know, I'm doing the editing of the video right now, I did notice that this is the wrong flight plan. This actually doesn't match what we had. This is going from Mason City VOR directly to the Nodine VOR. It's skipping Rochester. And here, when I went to double check, I just kind of looked at the general shape 
and forgot that it went more to the north in the middle of that section there, that long segment. So luckily though, I used 45 minutes of reserve fuel instead of like 30 minutes. So I did have an extra 15 minutes of fuel I didn't necessarily need. And because of those extra reserves, we were just fine on fuel for this flight. So that was a mistake I made in the planning when I was using Simbrief here to get this block fuel amount. But this block fuel amount worked out just fine, 232 pounds. So I go in here and put this into the weights. Up here at the top, I just use the fuel slider and just notch it over to get at or above 232. Actually landed right on 232. And then I added just a little more, a couple more pounds of fuel because I was waiting, uh, just sitting here idling for a while. And then for the pilot and co-pilot weight, made sure to change the co-pilot to zero because that's also something I put in the sim brief flight plan was zero passengers. So I wanted to make sure that it wasn't including any passengers in cargo. All right, so let's get ready to taxi. We're gonna use runway 15, the winds are calm and runway 15 is right near us. It's gonna be a short taxi to get there. Now I'm just gonna switch over to these aux pages to block the GPS map so I can't cheat. I'll probably take a look at it from time to time just to show you where we're at, just to reinforce that our navigation is going well. And then I'm setting my heading bug here to runway 15 just to remind myself which one we're taking off from. And when we get on the runway, we should expect the heading indicator to be mostly centered. Then I'll change my little computer here on the left to outside air temperature to make sure that it's not too cold when we're up there uh, to make sure uh, that we have, that we use pitot heat if we need to, if it gets too cold. But we're only cruising at 3,500, so it'll be fine. All right, so I'm gonna taxi over to runway 15 and then we'll do the takeoff and then we'll get started with our VOR navigation. All right, so we got full power set. Wind is calm, so we just need a little bit of right rudder here. And then we'll rotate at 55 knots, and we're pretty light. We just have, you know, we have no passengers, no cargo. You know, a little bit more. I'm just very light when I pulled back, so it took us a little more speed to get up. All right, we're at 75 knots now. So we're gonna pitch for our VY. So that's 74, 75 knots and the 172. And right away, I just noticed right here, the CDI just came alive. So that means we're receiving the Mason City VOR now. So remember when we take off, we need to turn to the east. So what I'm gonna do first is just engage the autopilot. We're gonna climb here. We're over 400 feet now. So I'm gonna turn the autopilot on and then I'm just gonna make sure that we're climbing at a steady rate here. Gonna use vertical speed mode on the autopilot to bring us up to 3,500 feet. Then we'll make our turn to the east and be headed towards intercepting that first radial outbound for the Mason City VOR. All right, so here I have, remember, the 032 radial dialed in. What we need to do is turn to intercept that course. So we have the from flag here on our CDI. What I want to do is turn our heading. I'm running in heading mode right now with the autopilot. And we're going to go at like a 45 degree angle. So that's pointing to about 080. So I'm going to go ahead and turn our heading over to the right towards 080. And we're going to turn to intercept that course that we dialed in. Now remember that line that's shown on the CDI, that represents the magenta line on our sky vector flight plan. So that segment going from the Mason City VOR to Rochester VOR on the 032 radial that is what that needle is to the right. That's the course that we need to turn towards. And as we fly towards it, the needle will move in. And then when it gets to the center, that's when we want to track that by flying that same heading. We'll fly a 032 heading. We'll have to account for wind. Uh, but what I'm gonna end up doing is just using nav mode on my autopilot to let it keep the needle centered once we're on that radial outbound. Now, if we want to check our position relative to the Mason City VOR and see what radial we're on, 
Well, on the 530, it does tell me right over here. It says we're on the 338 radial, 339. So that radial is changing because we're crossing over all those radials, right? We're not tracking one yet. What I could do to figure that out is just use the OBS knob. So if you don't have a 530, all you have to do is turn the OBS knob until you get a from flag and then keep turning it until the needle is centered. And then whatever radial is dialed in at the top, that's the radial you're currently on. So you can see the needles moving fast because we're basically flying at an angle, 45 degree angle, and we're just flying past radial after radial after radial, we're just crossing across all of them. You know, we're not tracking a radial. So it's a little more tricky, but if I do switch out, so I've switched to north here, so that's 360. And you can see here and verify that the radial shown on the 530 matches what we're seeing here. So as this comes to the middle, when the needle gets directly to the middle, then we'll be on the 360 radial. So it's got the from flag, needle is centered, and then we'll see on the 530 that at that moment, it says 360. There's 359, and the needle's centered, and it says zero degrees, or 360. So right now we know that we just passed the 360, so we have about 30 more radials to fly through, right? So all I have to do is, I'm just gonna go back to the 032 radial now. We're just gonna wait for that course and that needle to come back in. Now, because I have autopilot on the Cessna 172, I can take advantage of that and I can use nav mode. So I'm gonna to switch to nav mode now. And the autopilot is gonna basically do what I was just doing. It's gonna fly at a 45 degree angle towards that course. And then once it gets to that course, it's gonna intercept it. And then it's gonna track that course or that radial outbound, just what we said. So it's gonna keep going towards that needle. Once the needle gets to the middle, it's gonna track that needle, track that course outbound from this VOR. All right, now we can see some signs of life on the needle. So we're almost at the 032 radial and the autopilot's gonna start responding to that soon by turning us to the left to anticipate the needle reaching the center. And so you could do that yourself if you're flying it manually. As the needle gets closer and closer, you can just reduce that angle that you're heading towards the course on. So instead of keeping it at a 45 degree angle or so, you can just turn to the left more and reduce that a bit so the needle comes in more slowly until you intercept it. But if you overfly it, no big deal. Just turn back and keep chasing that needle and keeping it centered. But with the beauty and the uh, convenience of autopilot, we just turn it on, let it do the work for us, and we can worry about other things and uh, let it manage that part for us. And we just monitor. All right, so now the autopilot is taking care of that. What we're going to do is check our notes again and see what our next step is. All right, so here we take a look at our distance. We are 9.1 nautical miles away from the Mason City VOR, so 9.3 nautical miles now. Now your DME may be somewhere else, mattering the plane you're flying, but mine's on the 530 right there. So if we look at our next thing here, what I said was we're on the Victor 161 now, and we have 52 nautical miles to go on that entire leg, but we have to switch when we're halfway. Remember, when you're halfway along a point, unless there's a specific or explicit crossover point noted on the chart, you switch over when you're halfway. All right, if we bring up Sky Vector again, take a look at what we've done so far. So we took off from Forest City. We went to the east, or actually more towards the northeast like this, intercepted our 032 radial. That puts us on the Victor 161 airway. So we're going along this airway right now. And over here, remember, we have 52 nautical miles between this VOR and the Rochester VOR. So what we're going to have to do when we get to the halfway point of 26 miles is then switch over to use the Rochester VOR for navigation. So this is really just to make sure that we're in the reception range of those VORs. It's just a general rule that you do it halfway. Unless it shows a specific changeover point like we looked at earlier, you do it halfway. So we're just going to keep monitoring this and wait until our DME distance reads 26 nautical miles. And that's when we'll do the switch over. All right, let's take a look at our distance now. All right, 23.7 nautical miles. All right, so all we're gonna do is switch over from one VOR to the other one, because we're about at the halfway point. So remember, we're gonna switch over to Rochester VOR when we hit 26, 
We already have that plugged in. It's 112.0. That's in our standby nav one radio already. And the new course is going to change just by one degree from 032 to 033. So before I make that course change, I'm going to change our autopilot mode. So I don't want to change the course that our autopilot is actively following. It's just good practice to make sure that I know exactly when the autopilot is going to take over and fly the course for us. So I'm going to make sure the heading bug is straight ahead to our current heading. And then I'm going to switch our autopilot mode over to heading mode again. So we're just holding our heading, going straight to this VOR still. And you know, the wind could be pushing us, but we're just going to do this for a moment. So now we're just waiting for our DME distance to read 26. And then I'm just going to hit this little V swap button here. And we're going to swap our 112.0 frequency for the Rochester VOR to the active frequency. So there's 26.0, hit the swap, the CDI goes blank and then refreshes. Now we have a two flag and right here it shows the RST, which is the Rochester identifier. You could also press the nav one button here to listen in for this Morse code pattern here. What the 530 is actually doing is listening in on this audio for us and it's decoding that. Those Morse code beeps spell out letters, they spell out RST. But the 530 is smart and what it does is it listens to that for us, decodes it, puts it there as letters. But if you don't have a 530, you'll listen to the pattern like this. All right, so that does match. So we've kind of double verified it here. So the next thing we're going to do now, we're in heading mode still and I want to use the autopilot to fly the new course. So I'm going to update the course here. Remember, it was 032. We need to change it to 033. So just a single click over one degree to the right. There we go. The needle is centered. And that's because we're still on the same course. You know, the actual course isn't really changing. The only reason we're changing that by one degree is because of the difference in what each VOR thinks magnetic north is. There can be a variation just because the VOR hasn't been recently adjusted to point to what is now magnetic north. So mattering how long it's been since it's been recalibrated, that variation could increase over time. And also just as we fly from one place to another on the earth, the magnetic variation for our navigation is going to change from place to place as well. So because of those two things, that's why when you look at the radials, you look at the airways that are perfectly straight, the radials on the opposite ends may not match up and be 180 degrees perfectly opposite of each other. All right, so I'm looking back at my notes here. So once we cross over the Rochester VOR, or when we're about to, we're gonna change our course to 076. So we do have 22.2 miles left until we get there. Because we have the two flag, remember we're heading towards the VOR. So our DME distance is going to decrease over time. So now this is a countdown how many miles we have remaining until we get to the VOR. So all we have to do now, especially because autopilot is on, is just monitor look out the window a little bit and wait until we get a couple miles away from the Rochester VOR and then we'll make our next turn. All right, so now we're at 5.5 miles from the Rochester VOR. So autopilot did a great job keeping us on course here. Let's go ahead and take a look at our notes again. Remember, at Rochester, we're going to turn to a new course of 076. Remember, 076, that's the radial, because we're going to be going outbound. So our course is the same as the radial 076. So we're going to make this turn to the right here. And before I update the course on the CDI, once again, I'm going to take our autopilot and put it into heading mode first. So make sure the heading bug is straight ahead. Switch over to heading mode because I want to be in control of when the autopilot starts that turn onto course. I don't want it to change as soon as I start moving the OBS knob. All right, so we're just going to wait for this to get down a little bit lower, but because we're in heading mode, I can go ahead and change this to our new course already. So I'll rotate it to the right. I'm going to bring this to 076. So there's 070, 075, and one more click. I always do this with my mouse wheel. So if you're using a mouse, I highly recommend doing it. It makes it really easy to click it one degree at a time. All right, now we see we just have 3.6 miles left. All right, now by the magic of editing, we have one mile left. And what I want to show you is what we're about to do. So normally what we could do is wait until we cross the VOR, then make the turn, 
and then catch up to that course, that new radial 076. Or what I'm gonna do, since we have DME and we know it's only a half a mile now, 0.4 miles, I'm just gonna turn us a little bit to the right already, just so we're kind of not overshooting that course too much. So you can see the CDI went blank. Now we have our from flag and we see the needle on the right side where we expect it. So all we have to do is go to an angle here around a 120 heading, and that will bring us to intercept that course. Now what GPS basically does when you're flying with GPS and autopilot is it does what's called turn anticipation. It will round that corner for you so you don't overshoot the course you intend to be on. It'll smoothly start the turn early and then intercept the course so you don't actually fly over the VOR or you know in the case of GPS fly over the fix that you're flying to. It'll just do that anticipation for you. So I just decided to just kind of you know start the turn a little bit early to get us over there and try to make it so we don't overshoot the course too much. So now I'm turning the heading bug over to this, which is about 45 degrees. So I just draw a diagonal line here to the one, two. So I know that we're gonna go to one, two, zero. Now you can see the course coming in quickly because we're so close to the VOR that it's really sensitive. You know, we make, we're crossing a lot of those radials really quickly because we're so close. And now that we're about at the zero seven, six radial, we're about to intercept that with the needle there in the middle. And it's gonna turn us back to the left. So I'm doing this with a heading knob right now. This is basically what you'll need to do if you don't have a nav mode on your autopilot or if you're not using an autopilot at all. You're gonna to need to fly left and right, intercept the needle, and then because of wind pushing you around while you're flying and just, you know, you're gonna generally get off course periodically, you need to be periodically turning back towards the needle to correct for it. So like right now, I kind of overshot the course. So I need to turn to the right again to catch back up to it. But since I have an autopilot, I'm just gonna switch back to nav mode. We'll let it do that work for us again. All right, let's see what's next in our notes. So we just made our right hand turn at Rochester VOR. So that's on a 076 course. So now we're on the Victor 82, also known as the Victor 170. And again, the MEA here, minimum on route altitude, that was 3000 feet. And we also noted that the distance between the Rochester and the Nodine VOR is 50 nautical miles. So that means we're gonna need 25 nautical miles. That's the halfway point. Remember again, there was no explicit changeover point on the chart. So halfway is the rule we use. So we're gonna need to tune into Nodine 117.9er. And then the new course, after we cross over it eventually, we're gonna turn outbound on a 127 course. So first of all, let's go down here go ahead and tune in that new VOR frequency. So 117.9er, there we go. So that's on standby, ready to go when we need to switch. So we don't need to switch until we get to the halfway point. I'm also gonna just, for redundancy, I'm just gonna update my CDI number two here on our nav two radio, just so they match. All right, so 117.9er, just verifying that's in, so we're good. What I can do is just use my second one to switch over to it just to see if it's in range. And we see it is in range already. And then here we have a course of 127 written down. But when I turn to 127, this doesn't make any sense. Look where the needle is. Now 127 isn't the right radial for this. What I'm trying to find is what's the radial that we're going in inbound to the Nodine VOR. So that's not correct. So let's go ahead and look at the chart again. Probably forgot to make a note here. Okay, right, so right here, Nodine 127, that's actually the course we're gonna fly from Nodine to the southeast to get to our destination airport. That's not the radial that we take inbound when we switch over to Nodine before we get to it. So we're gonna need to update this really quickly. All right, so I'm just gonna reorganize my notes here, write this down a little more explicitly. So when we change to the Nodine VOR, it's gonna happen at 25 nautical miles now we need to find what the radial is we're gonna use when we're inbound to Nodine. So that's right here, 260. So remember, I didn't, I didn't note that down, so I'm gonna, good thing I double checked. So let me just rearrange these notes here. So the 127 course, so this is after we cross Nodine. So when we cross ODI, we're gonna turn on a course of 127. That'll take us directly to our destination, which is Yankee 51. 
And then that's 31.8 DME away. All right, so now here, after we change to Nodine, and we have that frequency, 117.9, we need to go inbound on the 260 radial. So the radial is 260, but remember the rule, when we're inbound, the course is the reciprocal. So two becomes a zero, six becomes an eight. So that's minus two plus two. So the course is actually 080. So that's why it didn't work out over here on my backup CDI, my second CDI here. So this made no sense, right? We were expecting the needle to be almost in the middle. So if I update this to 080, there it is right in the middle, just what we expected. So this is another reason why using the second nav radio is nice. I just caught a mistake I made, forgot to plan for and put that radial at the halfway point. We would have figured it out, you know, if I only had one nav radio, we would have switched it and been like, whoa, that's way off course. Went to the chart, double checked the radial, put in the 080 course, but all right. That is the second mistake that I caught uh, during this flight. So the first one earlier was not having the same route for my sim brief plan. So our fuel is a little less than it should be, but we have a lot of reserve fuel, so it's fine. And the second one was, I forgot to note the inbound radial end course for this Nodine VOR. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stay on this until we reach that 25 nautical mile halfway point. So once we're 25 nautical miles, away from the Rochester VOR, then we know that we need to switch over to be inbound on the Nodine VOR. All right, we are now almost at the 25 mile point. So we've been heading outbound on the Rochester VOR. We're about to cross over 27 miles and we're gonna switch over to the Nodine VOR now. So just double checking our notes here, the course we want to fly is 080, that's the one we just calculated before, the reciprocal of the 260 radial. My heading bug is already synced up forward there, straight ahead, so I switch to heading mode. Now we just swap it and we see that it's changed, the needle is off course a little because we need to update our course. So we go ahead and change this from 076 over to 080. That's right there. One more tick. All right, and it's just a little off course to the left. So I'll just turn on nav mode again and let autopilot do that correction for us. All right, autopilot has taken us onto the course. So needle is centered now. And just to confirm we're on the right radial, that 260 radial, I can go over here, look at my 530. There we go, radial is 260. Now, if you don't have a fancy Garmin that just tells you the radial, if you look at your CDI, if you're tracking the course, the needle is centered, all you have to do with a two flag is look at the bottom to know which radial you're on. So right here is the 270. And if you have a from flag, you look at the top to know which radial you're tracking, which would be the 080. But right now, so we are on a 080 course, but because we have a two flag, it's the radial that's at the bottom. That's the actual radial we're on. All right, looking at our notes, our next step here is to cross the Nodine VOR, and then we're going to make our final course change. The course will be 127. That'll take us directly to our destination airport, which is Yankee 51. And again, that's 31.8 DME. So once we make that turn, we'll monitor our DME, and that'll go up in miles. And then once at 31.8, that's when we'll be at the airport. Now, something I noticed that I wanted to point out is we're about to cross over a fix right here, this one called Dimmy. And I know that because of these little segment numbers here. These little numbers are drawn. These are the number of miles between each of these waypoints. So the one right here, 17, that's between Dimmy and the Nodine VOR. And we're about to hit 17 nautical miles until the Nodine VOR. So at 17.0, that's when we'll be crossing over Dimmy. And I can confirm that just by cheating a little here and opening up our VFR map. Give it a second to load and there is Dimmy right there. Now we don't have any fixes that we definitely need to know about on this flight plan, but we could encounter them if there are turns in the airway. So turns will happen in an airway at a specific fix and we need to know how to figure out where that fix is located so we can properly make our course adjustment to stay on that airway. All right, so let's take a look at our notes again. So again, what we're waiting for is cross the Nodine VOR. And then from there, we're gonna make that turn onto a 127 course to go to our destination airport. 
So this is what it looks like on the map again, just to refresh our memory. Here's the Nodine VOR right here. We're gonna turn to the southwest, and then we're gonna follow it all the way down here to our airport. And we figured out how to do that just by looking at the airport information page. All right, so now we're only about four miles away from crossing over the Nodine VOR, and we're gonna make that right-hand turn once we do it to head towards the airport. So as usual with the autopilot, I'm gonna to switch to heading mode first. Got the heading bug synced straight ahead. And then we're gonna go ahead and change our course on our CDI up here. So now we're gonna change this. We're gonna go from 080 over to the right. We dial in that new radial, which is 127. There's 125, two more clicks, gives us 127. All right, so that's all set up. So now we just need to wait three more miles, fly over the Nodine VOR, and then we'll make that right-hand turn. Now down here, I have this bottom one set to the same VOR. I'm just gonna change the course here just to keep them synced up. Just have some redundancy going on here. So there's 127 here on the top of CDI2 as well. All right, and now we're about to cross over the VOR. Our DME is reading less than a mile. There it is. Both CDIs changed and now they've come back. There's the from flag that we're expecting. And now we'll make our turn to the right. So if I just draw a little line with my mouse here, I can see you know where the top of the needle is. That points right at kind of a 45 degree mark to the right. So I know that if I point my heading at whatever the top of the needle is right there, around 170 heading, that'll give me about a 45 degree intercept to the course. Now it's gonna come in pretty fast just cause we're really close. We, we just crossed over the VOR. So this course is gonna come in pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna switch over to nav mode already and just let autopilot handle anticipating it come in. So here comes the needle and it's turning back to the left to intercept that radial. So now we're gonna be heading outbound on that 176 radial going straight towards our destination airport. All right, so we've gone about 13 miles. So we're 13 DME away from the VOR. And let's go ahead and check the weather at the destination airport. So 118.975, that's the AWOS frequency. So I'll use my COM2 radio, dial in that frequency and then activate it. And now I'll just hit the COM2 button up at the top and write down the weather. All right, COM, 10 miles of visibility, clear. All right, 19 degrees and altimeter 29998. All right, I'll hit COM2 on my little radio panel there to silence that. We're still tuned in if we need to check again. All right, so we're 14.6 nautical miles away and it's at 31.8 nautical miles. So that gives us, you know, we have about 16, 17 miles to go. We're currently at 3,500 feet. We wanna drop down to 2,300 feet. So that's our pattern altitude. And let's do a three mile final. So we wanna get down to our pattern altitude when we're three miles out. And we're gonna line up for like a straight in approach here. So 28.8 DME, that would be if we subtract three miles from it, right? From 31 to 28. So for our descent, we're gonna do a 600 feet per minute descent in the 172. We could do five or 600, but because I know we're gonna do 1200 feet, it's just the math is nice. 600 feet per minute means it'll take us just two minutes to do that descent. And then we want to be three miles out before we get down to that altitude. So we're going around 110 knots or so. 120 knots is two nautical miles a minute. So it's 60 knots equals one nautical mile a minute. 120 is two and so on. So in two minutes, we'll go four nautical miles. So we have 28.8 remaining. We'll subtract those four nautical miles. Let's just call it 4.8 to make the number round. So then we'll end up with 24 nautical miles DME. That's our top of descent. So we're going to start our descent when the DME right here says 24. And we're gonna descend at 600 feet per minute. Now, if we had, you know, this would be a lot further distance out for our top of descent if we were much higher, but you know, I chose a really low minimal altitude here. We're only at 3,500 feet. So it'll just take two minutes to do that descent. All right, I'm gonna switch over to the VFR map now and just zoom in on our destination airport here. So I'm just gonna pull this line down so we can see where our runway is. So runway 11 will be this direction 
So you add a zero to the runway number and that gives you the rough magnetic heading of the runway. So that's one, one, zero. And then there are some mountains here to the top. It shows obstacles about 1400, 1500 feet. We'll be at 2300 feet when we're going through this area until we get closer. So we'll just keep our eyes out. Go ahead and check outside the window now and just look what the terrain looks like. So there are some little valleys down here like this. So, you know, it's clear we have a ton of visibility, so I'm not worried about us uh, hitting any of this terrain on the way in. I'm gonna go ahead and turn our selected altitude on the autopilot down to 2300. So that's the pattern altitude we wanna descend to. And now all we have to do is wait until our DME says 24 miles, and then that's when we start our descent. So something else we also got was the new altimeter reading. So that was Two nine or nine or eight. So I'm going to go ahead and update that. Do that on our main altimeter right here. And then also because of our autopilot, once again, have to go down and synchronize the autopilot's altimeter setting right there, hitting the barrel button. All right, that's all synced up. All right, so now we can just chill for a little bit and wait until we get to 24 DME shown there on our Garmin 530. All right, so we're about to hit 24 DME. And remember, that's when we calculated our top of descent will be. So I'll use the autopilot to put us at 600 feet per minute. Oops, that's way too fast. I had to hit alt first, there we go. And then minus 600 feet per minute. Did a little bit of a dive there. Good thing we have no passengers. All right, so that's set up, minus 600 feet per minute. We'll get down there like a few seconds earlier than anticipated because I just dove us really quickly. Uh, like a thousand feet per minute for a second there. All right, and then the airport is in front of us, so I can zoom in with the power of sim zoom with my mouse wheel. Pretty sure that's the runway right there, slightly to the right. It is a hard surface runway, 4,000 feet long, so we have plenty of time to stop there. Go ahead and pull us up to 500 feet per minute just because of that little dive I did. And then I'll just need to get lined up with the runway. So in a little bit, I'll make a right hand turn and then a left just to line up for kind of a straight in approach here. Remember what we calculated with the VOR and navigating was to get us pretty close to the airport. So pretty much going right over the field or a little bit to the left of the field. But you know, as we get further and further from a VOR, they become less accurate because of how far away we are. One degree difference covers a much larger area on the ground. So. We're close enough to have found the airport, but we could have used a closer VOR if we got lost, but we just stuck with the one that we were already tuned into. All right, so let's use the CTAF frequency, announce a full stop landing on runway 11. And we'll just get a little bit closer and then I'll line up for this landing. So I'm just using the heading bug to turn us to the right. I have a shortcut on my throttle quadrant for that. I'm just turning us out to the right a little bit more. And then once it's lined up with the runway, we'll turn to the left. I'll turn off autopilot and we'll land. So there's the runway right there. All right, turn autopilot off. And in the Cessna 172, we can actually get our first notch of flaps down as long as we're below 120 knots. So I'm going to put one notch down now, and I'm going to pull our throttle back quite a bit here, get us within full flap range. Nice and clear day, so we can just see everything here. And the runway is really easy to see because it's hard surface. And if you hear those clicks, that's me using my trim wheel on my, I use the Honeycomb Bravo throttle quadrant. So it's got a nice trim wheel on that. So I can just roll it with my right hand here. And I use my stick in my left hand. All right, just trimming out more as I pull out more throttle. We're at about 75 knots right here. Get another notch of flaps down. Winds are calm, so I'm gonna use full flaps to land. All right, looking pretty good right here. And 
And I'm just watching my vertical speed. It's a little more than 500 feet per minute, so I'm just adding some throttle. Remember, when you're on final, the trick is pitch for speed and power for altitude. All right, so we're looking pretty good here. Maybe add a little throttle, feel a little bit low. And we're a little bit fast, so I'm gonna pull up the nose just a little bit too. And once we cross over the threshold, I'm gonna slowly pull our throttle to idle. And this is a really long runway for us. It's 4,000 feet, so I wanna make it to the other end, so I'll keep the speed up a little bit. And we're at 60 knots, flaring a little bit. That was one of my better center lines there. I'm usually off pretty far to the right, so I'm still a little right, but that was pretty good for me. All right, and I'm gonna keep in the speed up here a little bit just because we're going uphill slightly, and we need to get up here to the end of the runway for our turnoff. You can see the little uh, beacon tower right there, and you can see those buildings, so we need to get all the way up there. So keeping that speed up. All right, here's the other end of the runway. Get slowed down. We're going to turn off here to the right and then go and park. So I'll get this thing cleaned up as I'm turning off here. First of all, I can, if you want to do this kind of thing, you can announce you're clear Yankee of the runway in for the in-game ATC. Is clear of the runway. And I'm going to start putting my flaps up and stuff. There's nobody here. Well, it's a decent size untowered airport. All right, flaps are going up. I got my lights going off, so strobe light off and landing light off. Taxi light is on. And got the ground crew right there waiting for us right after this plane right here. What's up, dude? We made it. All right. People usually ask me about those little carts right there. So instead of the big tug, it's replaced it with that little like hand tug. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below for where to download that. It's in the marketplace, but I'll put the name there so you know which one to look for if you want it. All right, pulling the mixture out, our brakes are on. Shut all of our lights and switches off and call this a completed flight. All right, one hour and 18 minutes. Got another landing in the books. All right, this is a pretty fun flight. Not too complicated, but good to get back into doing some VOR navigation. I hope you like this kind of longer form, full flight video, and you can be on the lookout for more of these in the future. So until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video or on the next stream.